happy Mother's Day to you. I know um, Mother's Day brings out joy and sorrow. Uh, maybe I'll add to some, give you some laughter this morning. And um, you know what? I, I learned something a long time ago that God can cause you to forget, but He also can take pain from your memories. And I think that that's primarily what He does best: is He lets us remember to show His power. And he'll take pain from all of your memories. And you know, no matter what, you know, if, if we were talking about anything today, we would talk about the power of God, that he can do anything and there's nothing impossible with him, right? So we all know that's true. There's nothing impossible with him. So just know that. No matter what pain you're going through, no matter what you've suffered from, in any area, relationally, physically, financially, whatever it looks like, God can take pain from your memories. And I want you... To know that. Mother's Day started 114 years ago. I don't, I don't know if you know that. It was started by a lady named Anna Garvis. She was an Episcopalian lady in West Virginia. She was never married. And I find it interesting that she had one of the greatest mothers ever and was never married and never became a mother. You know, a lot of us in our life have sheroes. I hope you know what a shero is. Um, I have a shero in my life. My mother has always been an amazing person in my life. Every, I don't know. I just, I came out um, connected to my mom. Love her. Um, fact is, I have uh, the women that God has put around our lives are all incredible women, and, and we thank God for that, including our daughter-in-laws. We call them our daughter-in-loves. Uh, we, we love all of them. Uh, I have had the the privilege of having a wonderful mother. I married a wonderful wife. Uh, our children all married wonderful women, and uh, we are blessed beyond measure. Is all I can say that God has been so incredible to all of us, and my mother-in-law also is an incredible woman. We have mothers of our grandchildren, our, our Brittany. We have two crystals now in our lives, and we have Pastor Megan, and uh, it's just amazing what God can do. And then we have four girl granddaughters, which is phenomenal. We have five girl granddaughters and one grandson so it's amazing what God wants to do so we're going to have a little fun we're going to we're going to start out let's stand with me this morning we're going to start out in the scripture um I will there'll be there'll be some nuggets in here for you this is not by any means a sermon this is more of an exhortation to just get your your uh thoughts some of you are going to go down some through some uh, nostalgic ways this morning some of you are going to go down um a road in the past, and then others of you are going to be inspired and encouraged. So uh, let's, just, let's just walk down that together. They're going to put up the passage of Scripture for us in 2 Timothy. I'm going to read a passage of Scripture that you should be uh, familiar with. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 3, I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. And this is where we're going to dive into our thought. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. One more verse, I think. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in your hands which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your way. Thank you, Lord God, for letting us hear your word. Thank you, Lord, for helping your messenger this morning in the name of Jesus. And it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. You know, the uh, the world, moms are the greatest influencers ever. You know, there's a there's a great quote. I don't know who coined the, fro- the, 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 the quote, but it's, it says that the hand that rocks the cradle influences the world. The hand that rocks the cradle influences the world. That is so, so true. And it, it can be both a negative or positive, but that, th- those mother's hands are powerful hands. I'll give you a story. Uh, a, young boy got caught, got, a young boy got a job on the farm and was telling people he gets up at 5 a.m. Who gets you up? Well, my mom does. My mom makes my breakfast, and then she makes my dad's breakfast. He says, what else does your mom do? The son says, well, she cleans the house, washes the clothes, cooks all the meals, and irons all the clothes as well. He said, does your mom get paid? The child looks at the man and says, no, my mom doesn't really have a real job. Amen? (laughs) How many of you know, moms, that you feel that way sometime, right? And it's the greatest job 
in the world with the greatest, greatest reward. Give me slide three up there about the mom stats, please. Let me have those stats for you. I want to throw them out there this morning. Six of 10 teens talk to mom. I still talk to my mom. I feel like a teenager, and she calls me Tommy. She's the only one who calls me Tommy. Don't try it. I will shoot you. Amen. Uh, 75% of teens give moms an A. Only 6% give moms a C or lower. One third of all people say they would not change much about mama. And besides that, you can't change mama anyway. So isn't that true? And it is true that when mama's not happy, nobody's happy. That's true in my house. (laughs) And it's probably true in your house. And some men will say, not my house. And she'll say, "Um, we'll see, right? And they do have influence. So, you know, let's let's do number two. God honors the prayers of mothers. We see that in Scripture so profoundly that God honors the prayers of mothers. We could start out in the Bible with Hannah. Uh, that Hannah, who was barren, uh, went to the Lord in absolute sorrow. She went to the temple. She wanted to, to raise a son. She wanted to give a son to the Lord. And she said, told the Lord if he would give her a son, that she would give him to the Lord. She did raise up that son. She did give that son to the Lord. We have, the, we have Anna in the scripture who prayed to see the Messiah in Matthew chapter 2, and she waited for the Lord. And then when she said, when she saw the Lord, but she prayed, the Bible says that she served the Lord with prayer and fasting. And it was God that honored her prayers. We see the prayers of Mary in the Bible, the mother of Jesus. And we know that God certainly honored the prayers of Mary over her son. And then there's our mothers. I know that my sons know that their mother prays. My sons know that their mother gets words of inspiration about the music they're listening to, what they're smoking and what they're not smoking. Uh, my wife had a huge intuition, was prophetic in every way. She busted Brian many times listening to Little Wayne and all kinds of junk in his truck. And so, you know, we, we, my, my, just in the middle of the night, we'd just walk out there and say, you know what, I'm going to go check Brian's car. She'd go out in his car and she'd find his dip. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, he did a little skull once in a while, right? And uh, you know, and she, and she just knew, right? Because why? Because God honors the prayers of mamas. You know, I heard a story one time about a guy who was out, he was out drinking and his mother uh, opened the front door and put the front door, put the recliner by the front door and went to sleep at the, in the recliner. And um, when he came through the door, the, 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 the son door hit the recliner and he said, oh my God. She said, no, it's not God, it's your mama. You're going to wish it was God, right? <laughs> and that's, that's so true, right? We're going to wish it was mama. So if you're, if you're a mom, let me encourage you with this. I got saved in 1985. I called my mother the day I got saved and said, Mother, I've recommitted my life to the Lord. And, of course, my mother, my mother was ecstatic about that. And here's what she said to me. She said, well, son... I've been praying for you for 10 years, from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. every morning. We were talking again 10 years later. I said, Mom, I said, I've been a pastor for 10 years now. She said, yes, I know, Tommy, because I prayed for you those 10 years. You were backslidden. So I just thought since you were a pastor, you needed it even more. So I've been getting up at at 2 a.m. for the last 10 years praying for you. I looked at my mother, I thought, what mother, what are you saying? And in my head, I was like, okay, mom, wait a minute. That's 15,560 hours of prayer for my mother. How could I fail? Why? Because you know what? God honors the prayers of a mother. Don't feel guilty about that. There's only one Dora McDaniels, I can promise you. My mother was in the same church, still in the same church, over 50 years. Taught one Sunday school class for over 35 years. Received the highest award she could possibly receive from the Nazarene church for a layman in the church. My mother is God-fearing. My mother has, and listen, our heritage is all because of my mother. Carter Grace, Megan, I I believe we're, we're now, I told Charles the other day, I said, there's my mom, there's me, there's our boys, There's Carter Grace. There's our grandkids. We're at five generations, all serving the Lord, all saved, 
And I believe it's because of Lily Bell Ingram, the Witchers, and others. But, but primarily, I can pass this all back to the key figure being my mom. Right. Mothers, you can be that person. You can be that person. My, mother's, my grandmother was, was, was like me. She was in the nightclub. She, was, she had a flask in her, in her bra, okay? And she would drink whiskey right in front of us. She'd make us breakfast. And be, you know, that's kind of the way I was for a long time. I was like the pool hall guy and the guy, you know, the nightclub owner and all that stuff. And you know what? My mother decided that curse is going to stop right here. It's going to stop with me and I'm going to change it. And mothers and fathers in this room, you have the ability to pass those things on to your children. And you can make a difference that will last forever and ever and ever. There is nothing like bringing grandchildren to your house and them all being saved and praying over your food and watching TV that you're all in compliance with. Are you listening to me? And you know what that, how that happens? It happens because one person says, I'm breaking every curse. It starts with me and I'm going to take the responsibility before God under heaven. I'm going to be the difference maker. I see that in all of my daughter-in-laws. I see that in our family. I see that in particularly in Megan and Brian and everybody in this room. All of our kids, we have the ability to break every curse and to make a difference in the life of our family for the generations to come. It's going to be worthy when we, and worth it when we look down from heaven and we see all those generations past us serving the Lord with fervor and fervency and making a difference in this life. And I thank God for that. And I thank God for every mother who said, you know what, I'm going to make a difference in this world and with everybody in my life. So let's do a few momisms this morning. We'll, di- we'll dive into a few of these. I got a few funny ones for you. Let's dive into the momisms on there. I think that's slide eight or nine. Jump over to there for just a minute. Momisms. You got me, Alan? There we go. Let me see if you're on the same page with me. Start with the one that says act like a baby, okay? Okay, well, I'll just do them with you. You guys, you guys are going to know that you don't have to read them anyway, okay? So let's, let's do a few momisms. A few momisms. You ready for them? All right, so here's what my mom always said. Let's see what your mom always said. Act like a baby and I'll... Okay, children are to be seen and not... Hmm. Mom, if we live under my roof, you will obey my... Y'all knew my mama really well, didn't you? If your friends jump off a bridge... <laughs> Shut the door. Were you born in a... You better wipe that look off your... <laughs> watch your mouth or I'll wash it out with y'all are smart moms are the greatest teachers if we, if, we, if we ask for what's the one thing your mother ever taught you I think all of us would have something to say about that I could say that about my father as well but my mother was the spiritual leader of our family, and uh, she taught us a whole lot. And moms are the greatest teachers. Moms are the greatest counselors. Moms are the greatest friends. I, I love to see um, women that grow up into their thir- 30s and 40s, and their moms become their best friends. And uh, they end their lives that way. It's a beautiful thing to see when that happens. Also, sisters as well. But I'll tell you a few things that my mom ever taught me. My mom taught me choice. She told me to go choose the switch off that tree. (laughs) She taught me behavior modification. She always told me, stop acting like your father, right? She taught me weather. She said, son, your room looks like a tornado. She taught me science. She said, don't cross your eyes like that. They may get stuck. She taught me anticipation. She said, um, just wait till your father gets home. She taught me how to pray. She said, your dad is not in a very good mood. She taught me logic. When I asked how come, she said, because I said so. And she taught me to quit. She said, stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. Moms were amazing, but mom also taught me to pray. Mom also, every night, every night, not just Monday through Friday, every night, we went to the room, we bowed at a bed, and we said the Lord's Prayer together, 
And then my mother would say to each child, what do we need to pray about for you? Up to the time we went to high school, till we got out of the eighth grade, and when we became freshmen, she stopped that, and we began to pray in a different way. But up to the eighth grade, we prayed in our home every night. It's something that you catch. The prayers that I prayed over my sons when I'm at their home right now, my granddaughter Lily, when we pray at our house, she prays the same prayers I prayed over my David and over Jared and over Brian. Lily always says, when, my, when I lay down, my sleep shall be sweet. We pray that over our sons every night. When you lay down tonight, your sleep shall be sweet. I even prayed over that on Brian one night when he was drunk. <laughs> the bad thing is he didn't remember. But anyway, <laughs> he went out like a light, right? <laughs> so my mom taught me to pray. My mom taught me manners. She's the one that taught us to say yes, ma'am, and no, sir. She's the one that told us how to act at the table. She's the one, like most fathers, you know, dads are dads. He didn't really care about protocol. Moms are just moms because that's why we're different, because we have different ways. My father taught me the outside stuff. My mother taught me the inside stuff, and both were needed. My mom taught me the importance of church. And like Brian has said, my mother drug me to church. We did church Sunday morning, Sunday night, revival nights, Friday night prayer. We did church. If the church was open, we were there. We did youth everything. We did youth events. We did the Bible memorization. Dear God in heaven. I'm having triggers thinking about it. But anyway, (laughs) she taught us the importance of church. She taught us the importance of honor. We had four children in our house. We weren't allowed to steal from each other. We weren't allowed to take each other's clothes. We weren't allowed to borrow anything without asking. Some things that we need to redo, we need to put in our culture today. My mom taught me that. My mom, and ta- my mom also taught me to think twice before I made a decision. My mother, I hope like your mother, was so amazing. And then we'll close with this. The need for a mother never goes away. The need for mom never goes away. There's a story. I want to read it to you. A child said, Mommy, you seem to never be wrong about anything. I'm serious, mother. You know everything. My child, she said, I only try and answer you the best I can. When you grow older, you will not need me. Nothing remains the same except the moon and the sun, she said. It has been 10 years since I lost my mom. And mom, I realize now you did not know everything at all. I still need you. And you know what? Sometimes we think that our influence didn't matter or we think that what what we're doing doesn't matter. But you and I know as you sit in that chair this morning that the things that you're carrying with you are the things that mom did and the things that dad did and the things that, you're, that you did in life, your siblings did. And most of our strongholds and struggles go back to those years as well. Some of those things are unforgettable. And thank God, and I want to say that to you mothers in this room. I'm 66 years old, and I still... Remember, and I still call my mother every Saturday. She's, 80, she's 88 years old and spunky as ever and funny as just super funny, has a great sense of humor, reads her Bible every year, year, all the way through. She tells me where she's reading at. She's 88. She spends, she spends a lot of, she sleeps 14 hours a day and loves it. She sleeps seven hours, gets up for five, goes back and sleeps seven more. The first seven is probably medication. The second seven is probably sleep. (laughs) And I'll ask her, what are you doing today, Mom? And she'll say, oh, I decided I was just going to take a V-day. I'm going to just take a vacation day and take it easy today. She's super hilarious, super spunky, super funny, and, and will always be a part of my life. And I'm praying, ladies in this room, if you're a young mother, I'm here to tell you, as an old man standing on this stage, an older man standing on this stage, Mother's influence never goes away. 
and what you're planting in them today is what they will be living tomorrow. And the one reason that I came back to the Lord after 10 years of, of being backslidden was because of my mother's influence, my mother's prayers, and I truly believe because of my mother's beliefs in what she saw in me and my brothers. And we're all serving the Lord today. And we thank God for that. So ladies, you have and are leaving a huge impression. And what you're doing is you are forming their life and making a difference in their lives in such a way that you will never know how much of influence that you are leaving. So I want to pray for you and encourage you. Will you bow your heads with me? Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for every mom in this room. Thank you for every mother and every father. Thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Father, that you draw us. And, Lord, you draw us to run after you. Thank you that you drew my mother. Thank you, Lord, that, you, that you're drawing the mothers in this room. Lord God, just plant seeds of life and hope into every child, God. We thank you, Lord, for that in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We thank you that the children, Lord God, will receive the seed in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord, even over, as I pray over my own grandchildren, God, that, Father, they will serve you all the days of their life, never leave you, never withdraw from you, God, that they will serve you with passion and unction, God, in the name of Jesus. Pray for the mother that's in sorrow this morning. Take the pain from that memory. Put smiles on our face today, God, as we remember your goodness and your mercy. And Lord, give us the wisdom to inculcate your principles, strategies, and your biblical pattern into our lives, teaching our children about Jesus. Teaching our children, Lord God, about the Holy Spirit. Teaching our children, God, about your ways, Lord God, because when we walk in your ways, we can also walk in your paths, God. So thank you, Lord. Bless every mom in this room. We thank you for it. Give them strength, give them courage, and give them wisdom, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. We pray. Will you stand with me? We pray that your day is amazing. I'm going to ask the prayer partners to come just in case someone needs prayer over a specific thing in their lives. So prayer partners, will you come? And if you need prayer this morning, please let a prayer partner agree with you. Maybe you're in... Maybe you're having a sad day, or maybe you need to receive the Lord, or maybe you need to just pray about something, or maybe you need a prayer of agreement in your life. If you need that from the Lord this morning, come on, let someone pray with you. It's going to make your day better. I'm praying your day is amazing. I'm praying that you have an, an incredible time with your family today. And mothers again, happy Mother's Day to you. Always remember, you're blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Have a great day.